Hey, what's up guys, it's Oakley and CA just released a dev blog. This one covers regional occupation. So this has to do with what races can conquer what regions. We had heard about restrictions before, so here CA dives into it. Basically what they start off by saying is that, well, the whole map is going to be divided up into holds and human settlements. Uh, and then besides that, there are then uh, kind of badland type regions or regions that you can't conquer at all. But the main division is going to be between holds, which are presumably dwarven Karaks, and human settlements. The holds can only be taken over by dwarves and greenskins, whereas the human settlements can basically be taken over by anyone unless you are a nomadic faction. So first they want to talk about this, and they first address the issue, you know, is the fact, you know, is this a bad thing? And the first thing they tackle is whether or not this concept is sacrosanct. Is this a must-have feature? Uh, namely, you know, do you have to have the ability to conquer the whole world? Now they tackle this in a couple ways. The first way they say is, you know, in previous Total Wars it made sense. You have humans versus humans, so it made sense from a realism standpoint um, in the past. However, they did, you know, ask people to think about, you know, what happens in your campaigns? Do you ever actually go ahead and conquer every single territory? Or when you get to that point, is it more of a task? And they were careful here to state that they wanted to kind of change things up a bit, but still maintain that sandbox environment that we all know is what we know uh, Total War to be. So they don't want to betray that, but they still want to shake things up. And they did say with what they've implemented right now that initially they had people playing the beta who were against it, but then the testers actually now, they've said here, have changed their minds and see it as more of a benefit than a detriment. Um, next they talk about it from a lore perspective. They start off by speaking mostly about the Greenskins and the Dwarves who they say here even a shallow reading of the lore will let you know that they're always battling almost throughout time for the Karaks, the holds. And these are, of course, the only two factions that can take over these holds. So they said that makes sense for lore. And they did mention here in this little blurb that Skaven feature heavily in this kind of conflict for the underground as well. But at the moment, they're not in the game. Next, they then talk about, uh, you know why um, human settlements can be conquered by anyone and that's mostly because in the lore they're always getting beat up all the time so um, you know waves of green skins coming in to to attack the humans um, different humans fighting humans so everyone is kind of picking on the humans in the lore here um, so I thought that was cool and then they go ahead and talk more about this um, how this makes each different faction definitely play very differently now Obviously, it's going to stick in the back of my mind that, you know, you are restricted in the ways you can expand it, but they do go ahead and tackle this in the future. Another area that they wanted to talk about is going to be the deeply inhospitable chaos weights, uh, wastes, where attrition rates are high and the influence of chaos is rife. So basically, no one can occupy these lands according to the lore. And in the game, it's only really going to be the nomadic factions, basically uh, the, the Norskin tribes who occupy these places and kind of roam around, and the Chaos players. Um, Norska is going to be very cool. It basically means you can only ever really go up there to plunder, but you're not really going to get too much. So it's an area you want to keep away from, but that is going to have a tendency to breed all sorts of raiding, ravaging, pillaging bands that can come and attack your coastline. So perhaps you want to go down there and kind of smack down the armies every once in a while, but you can't really stick around and establish a, a foothold up there. They also wanted, you know, to, to get back to this saying, you know, we very much wanted to make players think carefully about what they did because you can't generally conquer everything. You have to be very careful about what you think of each faction. If you push in a certain direction, then maybe you're going to have to go around um, a unconquer or an unoccupiable tile, essentially, and that'll force your settlements to be kind of disrupted and force you to really think about this. Um, because they did say, you know, from a gameplay perspective, the way traditional Total Wars played out is that you would, for the most part, start off small and then slowly expand one region, one province at a time in a bubble that grows outwards. And this is, you know, if I look back on it, pretty much true. You would always attack your borders always have continuous frontiers and just build out from there. And that's something that they've done away with. So that's going to be very interesting. It's going to shake it up, uh, to say the least. And then they said here that, you know, as you expand, you're going to have to think about what you do with the tiles that you can't occupy. Are you going to raise it? Are you going to raid it? Or are you actually going to make an ally of the people in that tile? Because if you can't occupy it, maybe you'll let another faction kind of stand between you and what they call here very bad things. And then uh, at the end, they say, take it from me. 
these very bad things will be coming. But finally, we're going to get to see the map that CA pointed out here. So the color coding on the top, the black and the yellow up in um, sort of the Chaos Waste in Norska, those are going to be areas that really can't be occupied by anyone. They're going to be the home of nomadic tribes. Everything in white can be conquered essentially by anyone except for the um, Norskans and the Chaos who are always going to be kind of roaming around. And then blue is going to be only conquerable by the dwarves and the green skin so that means it's uh, rather interesting so you might think oh no as the dwarves and the green skins I can't really go anywhere but you know a third of the map however they did say you know the factions have now the ability to stay in the field and so um, you know right here basically they talk about this they wanted to balance the restriction with the lore with the gameplay but also make it play out differently so like I was trying to say um, they're trying to freshen things up and in that previous map how we saw you know the mountain ranges are limiting however you could use them as kind of the core the spine for your army settlements and then from there then you can you know you're only a couple turns away from conquering the rest of the world um, at that point and branching out for those uh, for you know that type of engagement so I think it's cool um, they did quote or sorry they did pretend to say uh, that some of the beta testers were in favor it. nothing about how many of them, what percentage of them. It's rather vague, but I, I am tempted to take their word for it because CA has shown over and over again that, like they say here, we have the opportunity to make something challenging, new and different um, from what you've played before, all the while still having crucial to war feel. And that's what I think they've shown throughout the development of Warhammer is them really trying to bring the Warhammer lore to life and also just take the opportunity to shake up what Total War is. So I'm glad they've looked into this. It seems like it's something they've thought about for a while. And I was a little worried about it at first, but seeing how it played out, uh, and they actually had even some more talk-throughs uh, in the blog, basically where they talked through several scenarios, including a running Vampire Counts campaign. They talked a little bit about that. They talked about the scenarios as Greenskins, as the Empire. So if you're still having some worries or concerns, I would definitely point you in that direction, read that, and you get kind of a sense of what this mechanic is going to be like. Uh, but anyways, I think it's very cool. It's going to have... Once again, everything they test in Warhammer is going to be something that can later be implemented in a historical title. Um, and that is something that I would love to see in future games if they really make something out of this. Seeing how it could play out in a, I don't know, a Medieval 3 or an Empire 2 or something like that. But anyways, that's about it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Stay tuned for more. Peace out.